Hello and welcome to my code coffee. We are now starting next unit dedicated to transaction in blockchain. All the concepts related to transactions will be covered in this unit. This chapter which is chapter 8 in the series of Bitcoin blockchain gives you an overview of the concept of transaction. By the end of this chapter you will understand the in and out of transaction in blockchain. What is the meaning of transfer of Bitcoin from one address to other? What is input transaction and what is output transaction? So what is a transaction in Bitcoin blockchain? In simple terms, it is the transfer of Bitcoin from one address to another address. A transaction has two parts, an input and an output, also called transaction input and transaction output. Let's say Alice has five Bitcoins and she transfers three Bitcoins to Bob and two Bitcoins to Tom. So here input is five Bitcoin and there are two outputs, one with a value of three Bitcoin and the other with a value of two Bitcoins. Also remember that a transaction is identified by a unique transaction ID. Transaction ID remains unique across entire blockchain. So this is a transaction and let us say its transaction ID is XYZ which is unique value across blockchain. Now this transaction input and transaction output is not just Bitcoin values but there is more to it which we will learn later. But most importantly, transaction output will also have a locking script which locks this output to Bitcoin address. So this locking script will tell the Bitcoin system that these three Bitcoins now belong to Bob's address and two Bitcoins binds to Tom's address. In fact, you will learn later that transaction input never has the actual Bitcoin value or address. It just has a pointer to the original transaction output which it wants to spend. And along with this pointer, it has few more things like unlocking script, etc., which we will learn in the chapter of transaction input. So in this example, Alice had five Bitcoins, which means there was already a transaction output with Alice address and a value of five Bitcoin. And the transaction input was just pointing to this output, telling the Bitcoin system that it is a spending Alice five Bitcoin. And ultimately, this transaction created two new outputs, one with Bob's address with three Bitcoins and other with Tom's address with two Bitcoins. Also note that after this transaction, this transaction output is called spent or inactive transaction output because this output is already used and you cannot use this output again in any other transaction or in other words, it is already spent. Similarly, these new transaction outputs are unspent or active. Now let's say Bob wants to give one Bitcoin to David. Can we create just one output with one Bitcoin? No. Remember that these transaction outputs are spent in their entirety. You cannot spend them partially. So what will happen in this transaction? In this transaction also, there will be an input which will point to Bob's transaction output and it will create two new transaction output one with David's address having one Bitcoin and another transaction output with Bob's own address having two Bitcoins. So though Bob spent entire three Bitcoin output, but he retained two Bitcoins by creating an output to its own address. So after this transaction, this output became spent or dead or inactive. And these outputs are unspent transaction outputs. There is a special acronym for unspent transaction output and it is called UTXO. So UTXO means unspent transaction output and UTXO set is the collection of all unspent transaction outputs in a blockchain system. And as you can see that any transaction will add some transaction outputs in the UTXO set and it will remove some existing transaction outputs from the UTXO set. UTXO collection is often stored in a separate database by most of the wallet system for easy retrieval and calculation. So another way of defining transaction is that it is the creation of new transaction outputs by spending existing transaction outputs. This was a very high level overview of transaction, but there is much more detail involved here and we will go through it one by one. In next chapter, we will understand transaction output in details. Stay tuned and enjoy my code coffee. If you now want to move to the next chapter, you can click on this card. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way. For easy navigation to all chapters, visit mycodecoffee.com. Thank you so much for watching.